Hello students, welcome to the lecture on skill enhancement techniques. And after the lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain total quality management, TQM. Define knowledge management. Explain HR restructuring and re-engineering. Understand the quality circles. Let's start with a brief introduction to skill enhancement techniques. Skill enhancement provides the opportunity and knowledge for a client to develop and strengthen the necessary skills to gain, maintain and advance in a chosen area. There are generally four parts to effect training in specific skill enhancement. Assessment, skills program construction and selection, implementation, feedback evaluation, areas of focus. Examples of areas of focus in skill enhancement are detailed as social skills and competence. Social skills are defined as specific strategies that are used by an individual to perform social tasks effectively and thus be socially successful and socially competent. They can be seen as falling into one of the two categories. Environmental social skills which are essential to perform tasks in both an educational setting and the workplace such as listening, following instructions and appropriate work habits. Social interaction skills that facilitate any positive social interaction such as starting and maintaining a con conversation, complementing others and resolving conflict. Enhancing skills Failure to develop skill competence can be due to a variety of reasons and there are many commercially available skill programs to help an individual, family, work group or a company. Helping the person develop sensitivity and awareness for their problem areas. The development in the client of a sense of casualty by linking this particular problem, past and current events and problems. The development of a comprehensive list of alternative behaviors. Taking the client step by step through the most applicable alternative behaviors. Once a solution for the particular problem has been selected and implemented, the client is helped to apply the solution to other problems they may be having. Let's discuss about the total quality management. Total quality management or TQM is the optimization and integration of all the functions and the processes of a business in order to provide for excited customers through a process of continuous improvement. This systematic approach to quality management requires the following components. Planning the processes and inputs, providing inputs, operating the processes, evaluating the outputs, examining the performances of the processes, modifying the processes and their inputs. Objectives of TQM. There are some objectives of TQM that are given below. Process improvement, Defect prevention, priority of effort, developing cause-effective relationships, measuring system capacity, developing improvement checklist and check forms, helping teams make better decisions, developing operational definitions, separating trivial from significant needs, observing behavior changes over a period of time. The important principles of total quality management. The TQM is an approach that organizations use to improve the internal processes and increase the customer satisfaction. When it is properly implemented, this style of management can lead to decreased cost related to corrective or preventive maintenance, better overall performance and an increased number of happy and loyal customers. There are seven important principles of TQM as a foundation for all the activities. Quality can and must be managed. Many companies have wallowed in a repetitive cycle of chaos and customer complaints. They believe that their operations are simply too large to effectively manage the level of quality. The first step in the TQM process then is to realize there is a problem and that it can be controlled. Processes not people are the problem. If process is causing problems, it will not matter how many times we hire new employees or how many times training sessions we put them through correct the process and then train people on these new procedures. Do not treat symptoms, look for the cure. If we just patch over the underlying problems in the process, we will never be able to fully reach our potential. 
If, for example, shipping department is falling behind, we may find that it is, it is because of holdups in the manufacturing. Every employee is responsible for the quality. Everyone in the company, from the workers on the line to the upper management, must realize that they have an important part to play in ensuring high levels of quality in their products and services. Everyone has a customer to delight and they must all step up and take responsibility for them. Quality must be measurable. A quality management system is only effective when we can quant quantify the results. We need to see how the process is implemented and if it is having the desired effect. This will help us set our goals for the future and ensure that every department is working towards the same result. Quality improvements must be continuous. The TQM is not something that can be done once and then forgotten. It is not a management phase that will end after a problem has been corrected. Real improvements must occur frequently and continually in order to increase the customer satisfaction and the loyalty. Quality is a long-term investment. Quality management is not a fix. We can purchase QMS software that will help us get things started, but we should understand that real results will not occur immediately. The TQM is a long-term investment and it is designed to help us find long-term success. Yak it to me. Voice of the Web Total Quality Management Definitions Total Quality Management TQM is a comprehensive and structured approach to organizational management that seeks to improve the quality of products and services through ongoing refinements in response to continuous feedback. Total Quality Management slash DQM is an integrative philosophy of management for continuously improving the quality of products and processes Wikipedia. Total Quality Management is defined as a management philosophy and company practices that aim to harness the human and material resources of an organization in the most effective way to achieve the objectives of the organization. Total quality management can be summarized as a management system for a customer-focused organization that involves all employees in continual improvement it uses strategy, data, effective communications, and involvement of all level employees to integrate the quality discipline into the culture and activities of the organization. Total quality management is number one, it is customer focused. Number two, it demands total employee involvement Number three, it is process-centered. Number four, it is an integrated system. Number five, it is based on strategic and systematic approach. Number six, it is pointed on continual improvement. Number seven, TQM is centered on fact-based decision-making. Number 8. TQM demands an effective and efficient communications at all levels from top to bottom. TQM processes are divided into four sequential categories, plan, do, check, and act, the PDCA cycle. In the planning phase, People define the problem to be addressed, collect relevant data, and ascertain the problem's root cause. In the doing phase, people develop and implement a solution, and decide upon a measurement to gauge its effectiveness. In the checking phase, people confirm the results through before and after data comparison. In the acting phase, People document their results, inform others about process changes, and make recommendations.
for the problem to be addressed in the next PDCA cycle. This audio was brought to you by Yakitomi. Voice of the Web. Yakitome.com. TQM Diagram. The TQM is a comprehensive and a structured approach to organizational management that achieves the best quality of products and services through using effectively refinements in response to the continuous feedback and through using them effectively in order to deliver best value for the customer while achieving long-term objectives of the organization. Guideline for Total Quality Management Total quality management transcends the product quality approach, involves everyone in the organization and encompasses its every function, administration, communications, distribution, manufacturing, marketing, planning, training, etc. There are many guidelines of total quality management around to create the TQM diagrams. Though the different organization has the different total quality management criteria, in general guideline of total quality management should contain the following items. The TQM is a customer focused approach. It is company wide strategy and involves everyone in the organization. It aims at satisfying the customer or delighting them. It provides the best quality product and satisfies them in a cost effective manner. Fundamental changes in basic beliefs and practices. Prevention of defects is the way and the target is zero defects. Total quality management is methodical. Provides meaningful measures of performance that guides the self-improvement efforts of everyone involved. TQM diagram software. Airdrop Max is helpful for the drawing of the total quality management diagrams on PCs. The built-in TQM symbols and templates take all the work out of creating high-quality diagrams. Drag and drop, quick style and small arrangement and rich text using a market-leading TQM diagram software. It includes rich, rich templates and examples such as basic drawing templates, basic flowchart shapes, cause and effect shapes, data flow diagram shapes, IDE FO diagram shapes, SDL diagram shapes and workflow diagram shapes, TQM diagram symbols. With the standard TQM diagram symbols, it is easy to create total quality management diagrams for business processes, re-engineering, continuous improvement and quality solutions. Total quality management model. The TQM requires a new process thinking mindset. We must realize that everything we do is part of a process. Our focus shifts from managing outcomes to managing and improving processes, from what to do to how to do the processes better. TQM tools. There are some tools that are given as quality improvement teams. These are small groups of employees who work on solving specific problems related to quality and productivity, often with stated targets for improvement. Quality improvement teams are proving to be highly successful at tracking down the causes of poor quality as well as taking remedial action. Benchmarking. This is the process of identifying the best practices and approaches by comparing productivity in specific areas within one's own company to other organizations, both within and outside the industry. Statistical process control. This is a statistical technique that uses periodic random samples taken during actual production to determine whether acceptable quality levels are being met or whether production should be stopped in order to take remedial action. Commitment. In order for the eye on the future model to be a success, each member in an organization must be committed to the change process. It cannot be viewed as the new flavor of the month, but it should rather be regarded as an exciting life-changing process. Training. Management must promote the need for continuous training and it will facilitate the following. Employees will be more confident and motivated in their work. Reduce staff turnover. Reduce errors. Improve productivity, improve the organization competitiveness. Let's move to the next topic which is knowledge management. Knowledge management is one of the hottest topics today in both the industry world and the information research world. In our daily life we deal with huge amount of data and information. Data information is not knowledge until we know how to dig the value out of it. This is the reason we need knowledge management.
Knowledge management may be viewed in terms of people. How do you increase the ability of an individual in the organization to influence others with their knowledge? Processes. Its approach varies from organization to organization. There is no limit on the number of processes. Technology. It needs to be chosen only after all the requirements of a knowledge management initiative have been established. Technologies that support knowledge management. These technologies roughly correlate to four main stages of the KM life cycle. Knowledge is acquired or captured using intranets, extranets, groupware, web conferencing and document management systems. An organizational memory is formed by refining, organizing and storing knowledge using structured repositories such as data warehouses. Knowledge is distributed through education, training programs, automated knowledge base, base systems, expert networks. Knowledge is applied or leveraged for further learning and innovation via mining of the organizational memory and the application of expert systems such as the decision support systems. Developing a context. Like water, this rising tide of data can be viewed as an abundant, vital and necessary resource. With enough preparation, we should be able to tap into that reservoir and ride the wave by utilizing new ways to channel raw data into meaningful information. That information in turn can then become the knowledge that leads to wisdom. Before attempting to address the question of knowledge management, it is probably appropriate to develop some perspective regarding this stuff called knowledge, which there seems to be such a desire to manage, really is. Need of knowledge management. Knowledge management is based on the idea that an organization's most valuable resource is the knowledge of its people. This is not a new idea. Organizations have been managing human resources for years. What is new is the focus on the knowledge. This focus is being driven by the accelerated rate of change in today's organizations and in society as a whole. Knowledge management recognizes that today nearly all jobs invoke knowledge work and so all staff is knowledge workers to some degree or another, meaning that their job depends more on their knowledge than their manual skills. Let's now take a look on HR restructuring. As part of HR restructuring, employee recommendations about enhancing the existing leave program led the university to consider simplifying the current system for the new university staff plan. The proposed university staff leave program would include enhanced accrual and carryover of leave time and a yearly cash out benefit for some unused time. The restructuring of human resources is difficult as it always includes the changes in the job profiles of HR employees and it includes the changes in the organizational structure of human resources and it affects the way how employees do the job sometimes for years. The restructuring of human resources is not simple but it can bring huge benefits and to introduce the competitive human resources to the organization. The benefits of the restructuring are higher than the cost paid during the restructuring process. Let's talk about the re-engineering. Systematic starting over and reinventing the way a firm or a business process gets its work done. Defined by Michael Hammer and James Champy as fundamental rethinking and radical redesign of business processes to achieve dramatic improvements in the critical measures of performance such as cost, service and speed. Re-engineering is a management tool that became popular in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Like many such tools, it aims to cut costs while at the same time increasing productivity and providing higher levels of service. And while all this is true, re-engineering still offers companies much more. Re-engineering traits, one concept that is included in many re-engineering models is downsizing or the reduction of staff. Getting rid of excess staff members is an obvious and many times painful way to cut cost. When this happens, the layoff should be handled in such a fashion as to not strike fear into the main employee base causing the company to lose its competitive edge while its most valuable assets, the employees wonder. Re-engineering advice from the outside. Re-engineering often tends to be a long, painful and even confusing process. Many companies try to undertake re-engineering internally but with failed results. For these reasons, outside firms can be consulted to help, de help develop the new business design. These firms offer the expertise on important matters that members of the internal management team need help on. Why re-engineering often fails? Most re-engineering projects fail because of a lack of support from the upper management. 
While they are usually the ones who initiate the re-engineering effort, they often fail to back it up because the changes are so great. Re-engineering and small businesses In the business world, large corporations often have large problems and seem to be the most likely candidates for a major overhaul through re-engineering. That being said, re-engineering can work for a small business too. Process re-engineering Process re-engineering is an approach at improving the efficiency and the effectiveness of business processes that exist within and across organizations. Now let's explore the quality circle. A quality circle is a participatory management technique that enlists the help of employees in solving problems related to their own jobs. The history of quality circle. Quality circles were originally associated with Japanese management and manufacturing techniques. The introduction of quality circles in Japan in the post-war years was inspired by the lectures of W. Edgar Deming, a statistician for the U.S. government. Deming based his proposals on the experience of U.S. firms operating under wartime industrial standards. The Requirements for Successful Quality Circles in his book, Productivity Improvement, A Guide for Small Business, Ira B. Gregorman outlined a number of requirements for a small business contemplating the use of quality circles. First, the small business owner should be comfortable with a participative management approach. It is also important that the small business have good cooperative labor management relations as well as the support of middle managers for the quality circle program. Need of quality circle. The need for public and private businesses to improve quality of services is no longer an option but a necessity. Since the early 1960s, businesses across the globe have been searching for ways to improve overall operational efficiency. Objectives of quality circle. The objectives of QCC is to improve and upgrade quality of work through the problem solving capability of the workers, teamwork, the cultivation and assimilation of positive values and work ethics. Involvement and interest in work, higher motivation for work and awareness of responsibility towards oneself, the group, the department, office and the nation. The functions of quality circle. A group of employees who perform similar duties and meet at periodic intervals, often with management to discuss work-related issues and to offer suggestions and ideas for improvements as in production methods or quality control. The ideal size of a quality circle is from 8 to 10 members.
Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Skill enhancement provides the opportunity and the knowledge for a client to develop and strengthen the necessary skills to gain, maintain and advance in a chosen area. The final element of the TQM model is total participation. Social quality management is a comprehensive and structured approach to organizational management that achieves best quality of products and services through use, using effectively refinements in response to continuous feedback and through using them effectively in order to deliver best value for the customer while achieving long-term objectives of the organization. A group of employees who perform similar duties and meet at periodic intervals, often with management, to discuss work-related issues and to offer suggestions and ideas for improvements as in production methods or quality control. Benchmarking process of identifying the best practices and approaches by comparing productivity in specific areas within the one's own company to other organizations both within and outside the industry.